if you take a look at 1.1.1, the equation is already factorized. We just need to equate to zero. So we're gonna have 3x minus six being equals to zero or x plus two being equals to zero. We're gonna have three x is equals to six. We divide both sides by three, we get x is equals to two. And if x plus two is equals to zero, then x needs to be equals to minus two. So these are our two answers x is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 2. When the equation is already factorized, you don't multiply out like I see some people do. Right, 1.1.2. We're supposed to solve for 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 correct to two decimal places. Uh, that just tells us that we need to use the quadratic formula. We're going to have x being equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac everything divided by 2a this is the value of a minus 6 is b and 1 is c if we substitute we're going to have x being equals to minus multiply by minus 6 plus or minus uh, the square root of b squared b is minus 6 so we're gonna have minus 6 squared minus 4 multiplied by a which is 2 multiplied by c which is 1 everything divided by 2a so the value of a is 2 so we just have something like that x will be equals to 2.82 or x will be equals to 0.18 these are the values of x correct to two decimal places. Quite an easy one. We're just substituting in the quadratic formula. Let's take a look at 1.1.3. So in 1.1.3, we have x squared minus 90 being greater than x. Let's take x to the left hand side. We're going to have x squared minus x minus 90 being greater than 0. At this point, what you want to do is to find your critical values. How do we do that? We let x squared minus x minus 90 be equals to 0. Now we just need to factorize this. In factorizing this, we are looking for two numbers that when we multiply, we get minus 90, and when we add, we get minus 1. Uh, that is plus 9 and minus 10 being equals to 0. So x is equals to minus 9 or x is equals to 10. These are our two critical values. There's one thing we need to figure out. Our critical values is minus 9 and 10. We need to see if our answer lies between minus 9 and 10 or outside of that range. So let's go ahead and find out. What we can do, we can substitute 0 because it is a number between minus 9 and 10. If x squared minus 10 is greater than x is satisfied when we substitute 0. That means that all our answers lie between minus 9 and 10. But then if our equation is not satisfied, then it will tell us that our answer does not lie between minus 9 and 10. We need x to be less than 9 and x to be greater than 10. So let's go ahead and find out. x squared minus 90 being greater than x let's substitute zero so we have zero squared minus 90 being greater than zero minus 90 is greater than zero well we can clearly see that this is not the case minus 90 is not greater than zero so our answer does not lie between minus 9 and 10. our inequality is not going to be satisfied we're going to get an answer that is mathematically wrong which will tell us that our answer does not lie between minus 9 and 10, but it actually lies outside. So what can we say? We can say that x is less than minus 9 or x is greater than 10. That is our final answer. 1.1.3. Uh, let's take a look at 1.1.4. An interesting question. So we have x minus 7 square root of x being equals to minus 12. 
well, I have square root of x, so I want to square both sides. But then if I have this x and I'm squaring both sides, it gets complicated. So let me take minus 7x to the right-hand side and take minus 12 to the left-hand side. I'm going to have x plus 12 being equals to 7 square root of x. Now I can go ahead and square on both sides. If I do that, x plus 12 squared x multiplied by x, that is x squared, x multiplied by 12, that is 12x multiplied by 2, that is 24x plus 144 being equals to 49x. So now we need to take 49x to the left hand side. We're going to have x squared 24 minus 49, that will be minus 25x plus 144 being equals to 0. So now we just need to factorize this. Uh, we are asking ourselves uh, the same question again. Which two numbers do we multiply and get 144? But when we add them, we get minus 25. That is minus 16 and minus 9. So we're going to have x minus 16, x minus 9 being equals to 0. So x is equals to 16 or x is equals to 9. Usually when you square both sides, one of your answers is not correct. And you need to find that answer and cancel it out. But in our case, all our answers hold. But just be careful. Next time, uh, when you're solving a problem and you end up squaring both sides and get rid of a square root, one of your answers may not be correct. And you need to figure out which one is that one. Right, 1.2. Let's solve for x and y simultaneously. Uh, we have 2x minus y being equals to 2. I'm going to make y subject to the formula because it is less complicated. If I make x, I'm going to have to divide both sides by 2, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to have minus y being equals to 2 minus 2x. Divide both sides by minus 1. y is equals to 2x minus 2. Uh, well, I can call this equation 1, but I don't even have to do that. I can just solve it without calling anything equation 1. And then now we have x multiplied by y being equals to 4. In place of y, I can just substitute equation 1. So I'm going to have x multiplied by 2x minus 2 being equals to 4. x multiplied by 2x, that is 2x squared, and then minus 2 x being equals to 4. Let's take 4 to the left hand side. We're going to have 2x squared minus 2x minus 4 being equals to 0. If we divide every term by 2, this is just x squared minus x minus 2 being equals to 0. Let's go ahead and factorize this. Two numbers that when we multiply, we get minus 2 and when we add, we get minus 1. So that is minus 2 and plus 1. x is equals to 2 or x is equals to minus 1. If x is equals to 2, uh, what is the value of y? Let's find out. Uh, when x is equals to 2, y will be equals to 2. I'm substituting into this equation. Right. y will be equals to 2 multiplied by 2 minus 2. y will be equals to 2. Or y will be equals to 2 multiplied by minus 1 minus 2. So y will be equals to minus 4. 1.3. Uh, let's take a look at 1.3. So in 1.3, we're supposed to show that 2 multiplied by 5 to the n minus 5 to the n plus 1 plus 5 to the n plus 2 it's even for all positive integer values of n all right let's see how we can possibly show that what i'm realizing here is that we have 5 to the n on this first term we have 5 to the n on the second term and we have 5 to the n on the last term it seems like it would be a good idea to take 5 to the power n as a common factor uh, let's go ahead and see how that will look like. Uh, this will be equals to 2 multiplied by 5 to the n minus 5 to the n plus 1. 5 to the n plus 1 is just 
5 to the n multiplied by 5 to the 1. Because if you multiply these two numbers, you add the exponents and you get 5 to the n plus 1. Uh, let's do the same for the last term. Uh, this will be 5 to the n multiplied by 5 to the power 2. Right, so now we can take a common factor of 5 to the power n. As you can clearly see that we have 5 to the power n as a common factor. Right, if I take 5 to the power n on the first term, I'm going to be left with 2. On the second term, I'm left with minus 5. And then on the third term, I'm left with plus 5 to the power 2. So 5 to the power n multiplied by so 5 to the power 2, that's 25. And then we have 2 minus 5 minus 3 plus 25. Uh, that is 22. So we have 5 to the power n, 22. 22 is an even number. And if we multiply it by any integer, the answer is going to be even. So that's why we see that uh, this expression will always be even for all positive integer values of n. Right, that is 1.3. Let's do 1.4. Uh, the last question. Uh, determine the values of x and y if 3 to the power y plus 1 divided by 32 is equal to the square root of 96 to the power x. Right, so we have 3 to the power y plus 1 and we have uh, 32. Can we write 32 with the base of 3? Because usually in a case like this, we're trying to give all the numbers the same base. Well, we can't, but we can write it with a base of 2. So let's go ahead and try that and see what we're going to have. We will have 3 to the power y plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of 5 being equal to square root of 96x. Can we write 96 with a base of 3 or with a base of 2? Well, we can do that at the same time. Why do I say so? We're going to have the square root of. If you want to write 96 using prime numbers, you have 2 to the power 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 1, everything to the power of x. Yes, 2 to the power 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 1 is equal to 96. Let's get rid of the square root on the right hand side. We're going to have 3 to the y plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of 5. We don't have to necessarily square both sides. We can just say that 2 to the power 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 1 to the power x divided by 2. And just like that, we have gotten rid of uh, the square root. So 3 to the power y plus 1 divided by 2 to the power 5 will be equal to 2 to the power 5x divided by 2 multiplied by 3 to the power x divided by 2. This is the same as 3 to the power y plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the power minus 5. We're taking it from the denominator to the numerator. So it must have a minus sign on the exponent. This will be equals to 2 to the power 5x divided by 2 multiplied by 3 to the power x divided by 2. We can equate minus 5 and 5x divided by 2 and y plus 1 with x divided by 2. So if we say minus 5 is equals to 5x divided by 2 and we cross multiply we're going to get 5x being equals to minus 10 so x is equals to minus 2 now we have the value of x so let's go ahead and find the value of y y plus 1 is equals to x divided by 2 but we know fully well that x is equals to minus 2 so we're going to have minus 2 divided by 2 minus 1 so minus 2 divided by 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. So y is equal to minus 2.